lenses. Our optics, our premier optics in this, um, very crisp, very clear. You also get a, I'll pass it around in a minute. You also get a square viewing, in, so it matches up with the EOTech versus a round, like a binocular would be, with the 3X. Um, this is also middle spec, so it's hard as, I mean, you can tell I beat this one a lot. It just won't, won't break. Uh, it's a little heavier than the 3X. Some guys like that, some guys don't. We make two bases that go on magnifiers. We make a standard um, uh, fixed base, which you can still have a rapid detach. Again, arms mount, go off and on. Or we make a flip to side base. Most guys are gonna go with the flip to side. Um, you still have both options on a flip base, so you could, re you could remove it if you wanted to go gun to gun. The other thing is that uh, we make a ring for a night vision that matches up with like a uh, ATM PBS 14 that you would just flip this off and then put your night vision on and you'd be good to go. Let me, uh, I'll pass this around. This is a 3X. This is a 4X. It's got pretty close uh, eye release. You want to get up on it a little bit. Yeah, they're they're a great system. Um, the the base on the magnifier, you're actually still zeroing out to your uh, to your sight, but the base on the magnifier does have some adjustments on it so that you can actually move uh, the reticle into the center of the uh, magnifier. Sometimes they get off, <coughs> and they'll be you know up in the top right, but you just windage elevation to move. The um, the neat thing, and don't ask me how it happens, but even with the 3X or a 4X magnifier, we still remain a 1 MOA dot. I don't know um, if it's because of the laser, the holographics, or what, but it still remains a 1 MOA dot, whereas if you run a magnifier behind some of our competitors, it goes 4 to a 12 MOA dot, which now you're really, which the magnifier's for long distance, you're talking a huge area. Mm -hmm. so, right. Night vision compatibility. Uh, we make two models of most of our sites. You'll see we've got like a 511 and then a 551. And then we've got like a 512 and a 552 or a 516 and a 556. The reason we have those two numbers in the, the five, the second five represents night vision compatibility. It's a little button on the back here uh, that when hit, it drops that reticle down to a level that the human eye can't see any longer. If you run a night vision behind it, it will actually amplify that light to the point that you can see it. Because it is a laser, if you had it on full power and you turn your night vision on, it's gonna burn that reticle into the screen on a night vision without a problem. So you push the night vision button, drops it down. You can't see with the human eye anymore, but you can see it through a night vision. Uh, a lot of people think that when we say night vision compatible, that it is a night vision. It's not a night vision. It's just compatible with night visions. Let me pass some of these around too. Different models here. This is a 511. This would be our 553. This is a <coughs> standard 552 with the night vision. This is what we call our 557 model uh, that we just came out with. It has the buttons on the side and the night vision on the side, so if you are running a magnifier, you don't have to try to put your fingers in behind. This one also has our standard 223 reticle in it, which I'll pass around with the 4X. Where did 4X go? Right here, oh, there. I'll pass around with the 4X. If you look through this reticle, it looks like a standard post, re excuse me, a post reticle, uh, which would look like your standard post reticle. Through a magnifier, if you look at it though, actually it looks like this and it is set up for the ballistics of a 223 we also have one that's set up for the ballistics of a 308 so all you do is zero your top dot and then you're on i think it's i think it's 200 300 400 500 600 yards a lot of police departments like that because if you have a site that you're transferring from gun to gun uh, you only have to zero once and then you go for long range 
All of our sites are handmade in Ann Arbor, Michigan. When I say they're handmade, literally there's 78 people in a room in Ann Arbor, Michigan that take a site. They would take a site like this. One guy puts a screw in, passes it to the next guy. The guy sure. puts the hood on, screws it in, passes it to the next guy. All handmade in the U.S. in Ann Arbor, Michigan. The other nice thing about that is that they are fully disassembled. Uh, assemble a little bit. That would be the word. Um, if someone dents a hood, if someone breaks a bag or cover, if someone breaks a bag, you send it in. They can take this whole part site apart like you would a car, find the problem, put it all back together. Warranty work. Yeah. I've done a snap. Excellent. Oh, that's great. Excellent. Turnaround time for some sites that we just sent in. You know, it was like four days. Probably some of the uh, the recall. We had a small recall going on some of the sites, so they were prepared and ready to do that. They got yeah. them all back in. They were turning them out in a couple days. Yeah, like Plymouth just brought in a 512, the battery case. It looked like the thing had seen some water. There's a little rust in the bottom okay. of the battery case. Then, like four days, we had a new battery case back here fixed. Oh, they were super pleased with the turnaround time. Nice. That's the main. You know, that's the most important thing. Nice. And the thing, that, the cool part is too is when they do get something back like that, they're fast about it. If it's not covered under warranty and you have to pay for the parts, it's usually very inexpensive. Yeah. Um, however, we don't see a lot of that. Our return rate on EOTAX is 0.07%. Now, if you compare that, if you think about that, we supply the U.S. military with them. We supply civilians with them, we supply law enforcement with them. There's a lot of people out there beating on our sites pretty bad. We see a 0.07% return rate on them. That's pretty huge. The only downside to being handmade, and you guys probably will have experienced this, uh, it takes a little longer to build the sites. So therefore, we do experience some back orders. Uh, just be prepared on that. If you have a uh, agency that needs you know, 15, 20 sites, let them know that if they're not in inventory, it might be a little bit, but it'll be well worth the wait. Uh, why EOTech? Well, some simple questions are, their answers are, is it's fast. It's the fastest acquisition out of Target. You pull up, that red dot's there for you, you pull the trigger. You don't have to worry about a chin well or a cheek weld. Um, anywhere that middle red dot is, is where you're going to shoot. You could be off to the side like this, looking at an angle, wherever it is, it's going to shoot. I don't know if you guys carry some of the manufacturers out there. I'm trying to think of who makes them. Actually, they make a prism and a mirror. Another company makes a mirror that mounts on the side of an EOTech uh, like this. You can actually hold it out in front of you and shoot around the corner. I mean, it's that easy to acquire a target with these things. Uh, this is actually a quote on EOTech's website. It's idiot proof. It really is. Put the red dot on the target pull trigger. That's the way it goes. Uh, it holds zero. We've mounted these things on 50 cals. We've mounted them on tanks. We've mounted them on, uh, you know, belt-fed machine guns and helicopters. They, they're they're indestructible. They hold their zero. Uh, one guy uh, that we've talked to, uh, he zeroed in his site in 2003. He's never sighted it in since. It's wow. held zero that long. Wow. That's a law enforcement agency. So. It, it, it gets shot a lot, he, and he swears he hasn't had to move the, move the reticle at all.